All right, everyone. Thanks for uh, gathering here this morning. Um, just want to say two second prayer real quick. Father, in Jesus' name, help us in our unbelief uh, in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to give um, some honor where honor is due to uh, Pastor David and Pastor Scott. Um, I just think what the Lord has done through them is... It's nothing short of a miracle, especially considering where they have come from. Um, today, I'm going to share with you all why over 12 years ago, waking, waking up in a pool of my own urine was the best day of my life. Um, I grew up uh, in a typical, just worldly, um, unbelieving uh, setting. I didn't grow up in a Christian household or anything. Um, I grew up a child of Satan, to make it perfectly clear. Uh, I did his will. I was captive to his thoughts and his actions. Um, it's hard to wrap up in 15 or 20 minutes, but I'm going to try how I came to faith in Jesus Christ and my salvation. Um, so I'm going to highlight just a few points, um, B.C., before Christ, and then I'll get to my conversion, and then a few points after Christ, A.D. Uh, so to give you a little snapshot of my life before Jesus Christ, I was what you would call a uh, kind of an exhibitionist um, in life. I, one of my goals in life was to try every drug at least once. <laughs> so, if that doesn't tell you how lost I was, <laughs> that's how lost I was. Um, literally, thank God that I never got to reach that goal. Um, it was mainly marijuana, but uh, ecstasy, psychedelics, uh, a little bit of cocaine. Um, but, to highlight a few things, okay, our message last week here at this church um, I'm going to piggyback on that message. So, I'm in the fifth grade, and I'm with a buddy of mine, and we're with two girls at their house. Now, this is 1993. Yeah. So, before internet and all that stuff. And um, we have these, she has this big proje projection uh, screen TV, those old yeah. big screens. And we're sitting on the couch. And we're drinking Budweiser <laughs> out, of, out of a can. Now that was the worst part, it was out of a can. <laughs> it wasn't out of a glass bottle. But we're just sitting there watching pornography on a big old school, big screen TV, just fifth grade, drinking Budweiser out of a can. So, if that doesn't give you some context, that's kind of, you know, what I did and I would steal movies and magazines and all this stuff from the stores and with my buddies, hey, did you get it? Yeah, yeah, let's go. You know, steal clothes, uh, baseball cards. So that's, you know, I was a good guy to my friends and, you know, to people around me. I was a nice guy, but um, it's kind of how I grew up, you know, just a, a straight kind of rebel. Um, and then high school comes around and... <clears throat> got more involved uh, with drugs and partying, and basically my mindset before Jesus Christ was, hey, eat, drink, party, for tomorrow we die. Where's the next party at? Um, I always have these little sayings, and one of my sayings is, and the Lord will still whisper in my ear as I'm walking down the street sometimes, and I'll see a guy in the gutter, you know, just with nothing, and the Lord will whisper, ecstasy and prostitutes, Brandon, ecstasy and prostitutes. That's one of the sayings I always tell myself. Because that's where I'd be if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Hey, let's go get high. Where are the strippers? Where are the blah, blah, blah? Let's just, let's party. That was my mindset. So anyway, back to how I came to salvation in Jesus Christ. So I'm with some friends, and we're all doing drugs together. And my, I was hungry for like a few years before I got saved. I was really hungry for God, but I didn't know how 
to go about it in my lost state. So my way of seeking God was taking drugs and opening up different parts of my brain, and which the Bible would call pharmakia and witchcraft, but I'm lost. I don't know any better. I, I, but that was my way of seeking God was through drugs. So anyway, I'm with some buddies of mine. We're all high, and we're all going to the mall. And then right away, I realize, hey, today's the day. Today's that day. This creator, I always knew there was a creator. I didn't know who or what he was or what he wanted from me. But I knew enough that he existed. And we're all about at the mall, and I tell my buddies, hey, take me home. I need to go home. And, and I was, my heart was like beating out of my chest. Not from drugs, it was like, I really felt and believed today is that day I'm going to meet this creator. And so they're like, what are you doing? What are you talking about? We're, 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 we're going to have a party. Just, why do you want to go? I'm like, trust me, just take me home. So they take me home. Now, a quick disclaimer, this is not meant to teach doctrine or theology, because I know this won't match up in a lot of people's brains here. I'm not teaching anything. All I can do is tell you my experience and what happened. So I get home, I'm in my bedroom, and everything turns pitch, I mean, it's, I can't even describe it, but pitch black. But it's a, it's a blackness and a darkness that is, you can't even describe. It's out of this world. All I can, how I can tell you is outer darkness. So I'm, I'm laying on my bed, in my bedroom, and everything turns pitch black. And it's what you call a, a near-death, near-death out-of-body experience. That's what followed. So my spirit man, or soul, whatever you want to call it, comes out of my body. And I see my physical shell on my bed, dead, laying there, dead. Okay? Now... At this moment, okay, when everything is turning pitch black, I've never prayed a prayer in my life, okay? So the first prayer of my life was in this moment when everything turned pitch black and I'm, I'm sinking, I'm falling into this black, just abyss type outer darkness place. And at first I'm really panicked, like... God, why? I, I did, my first prayer is questions. And I'm on my bed, I'm just talking out loud. God, why am I dying right now? I'm only 21 years old. Um, I, you know, I'm so young. Like, what did I do? And I'm asking God all these questions, and this is my prayer. And I'm, and I'm panicked on my bed because I know I'm dying. I know I'm dying. And this place that I'm going to, it was the loneliest, darkest coldest, not temperature-wise like cold, but cold as in like, no life, nothing there, nothing. The scariest, coldest, darkest, just pitch black, okay? And so I'm literally on my bed crying out to God, why am I dying? Help me. Well, I don't understand, and I'm panicked, okay? And at that moment, everything went from pitch black to instant bright white light brightest light I've ever seen in my life so I thought okay so from pitch blackness to instantaneous bright white light and remember this is in my mind's eye I, whether to me the experience I was out of my body I could see my physical shell on my bed dead okay but I'm not I don't know maybe it was all in my mind's eye but this is just my experience okay so Goes from pitch black to bright white light. Now, I can't distinguish walls or ceilings or anything in this bright white light, but my spirit man is just floating in this bright white light, okay? Now, to that point, that was the brightest light I'd ever seen in my life. You know, you hear people talk about, I saw the light and I'm like, oh, that's what happened. Now, out of that bright white light came a light that was even brighter. And, <laughs> man, this light was a, a, a silhouette of light. Silhouette. 
and it looked like a, a beam in a robe. Okay? And this silhouette of light comes out of the bright white light. It's like a, a beam in a robe. I just, I, if I have to guess, I'm going to guess it was a heavenly angel. I'm not proclaiming here nor there. But this heavenly being comes out of this bright white light and it's gliding towards me like this, like on an airport conveyor belt when you're in the airport. And it's coming out like this, like it's gliding. Now, it puts its hand on my chest, my spirit man's chest, because my physical shell is on my bed, dead. But my spirit body is just hovering, floating in this bright white light. Now, it comes, it puts its hand on my chest, and I didn't hear a voice out loud like I'm talking to you, but it was a mind-to-mind -mind message. You know, kind of like a tele telepathic message. I didn't hear a voice out loud, but mind to mind. So, hand on my chest, and it says these exact words. Here I am, the one true God, Jesus Christ. It's exactly what this being told me. What I believe was a heavenly angel. I'm not speculating on names or who or what it was. That's exactly what it said. And at that moment, a spirit man comes back into my physical man on my bed. I sit up. Just a big pool of urine all around me, my own urine. And at that moment, things are firing in the back of my brain. Just rapid speed. All these things are coming back to me. And the one thing that stuck out, like I said, I didn't grow up a Christian or in a Christian household, but my mom's mom my grandma, I remember one Christmas, she gave me a children's Bible. <laughs> now, when you give a child of Satan a kid's Bible, what do, what do I do with that? Just chucked it in a drawer, forgot all about it. Never read a word of it. But I remembered, oh yeah, my grandma, she gave me that Bible. Now I know this God is Jesus Christ. So I went in that drawer... <laughs> I open up the Bible, and the rest is history. This is the God I've been seeking after for the le these last few years. Because when I was 17, 18, that's when I got really, really hungry for God. But like I said, I saw Him through drugs. But that's the wrong way to seek Him. But the Lord... <laughs> and people that have done drugs or have been drunk before, you know that, like, if you were at a party or something and the cops showed up, like... Instantly you're sober. Like, it doesn't matter how messed up, I mean, I can remember in high school, it doesn't matter how messed up you are, when the cops show up, <laughs> you're stolen <and> sober. <laughs> and you're like, you're good. Like, you walk a straight line and you'll do whatever. So, you know, people want to say like, oh, well, you were on drugs. Like, <clears throat> you know, it could have been all fake. And I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. You don't understand. Unless you've done drugs or, or were someone like that, you don't get it. Because... There have been plenty of times where I was high on whatever, whatever, and the cops show up, and you're good. <laughs> so, it really warms my heart, because there's a lot of testimonies out there like that, um, that, hey, I was taking my last shot of heroin, and an angel showed up and said, don't do it, and they got saved. And then, so anyway, there's a bunch of testimonies out there like that, but in a nutshell, that's what happened. So, um, real quick... If I can describe my life the last 12 plus years, uh, Scott said something that really, Scott always is saying stuff that really <laughs> sticks out to me and you know, always hits me. Um, I remember him talking about abortion um, not too long ago and said that that is the most heinous crime of our day. And it, it, it probably is. It's a good argument. I'm not, I'm not going to challenge that. Um, but what I believe is, yeah, it is child sacrifice. What, what I believe, what gets me weeping and, and staying up at night, I think the most heinous crime in our day, and I think of all time, throughout all ages, is a different gospel, a different Jesus, and a different spirit. A false, a false Christianity. And I re the reason why I bring that up real quick is because at least those babies 
get to be with God for all of eternity. As evil as that is, at least they get to be with God for all of eternity. But imagine getting to heaven's gate, and you're all excited. Hey, I'm going to go be with Jesus and meet Jesus and be with him for all of eternity. And then you get there, and oh, I had the wrong Jesus. I had the wrong God. I had the wrong gospel, the wrong spirit. And you, you turn, and you wind up in hell in the lake of fire. That, I think, sums up my passion the last 12 years of being a Christian. That's what the Lord has really put on my heart is to, <clears throat> to raise as much awareness as possible and, and get the warning out about a false Christianity, a false Jesus, a false gospel, a false spirit. And um, yeah, you want to get me fired up, start talking about that. Because <laughs> that's damned hundreds of millions, billions of souls over time. So anyways, guys, um, just want to say again, thank you, um, Scott and David. Some of the most humble pastors I've met, met them eight years ago, and just thank you for the, the platform. I know that, you know, again, like I said, may not fit your box, but it's just an experience that I had. It's how I came to know the Lord, and uh, it is the Lord of the Bible, so... Praise God. Thank you guys. Love you all very much. And uh